it's good to be back with you. And today I want to talk about the motion of a gyroscope. Now, this is one of the questions I get a lot, really, um, because it's counterintuitive. It's the gyroscopes act in a way that you wouldn't normally guess they would. The math is clear, the physics are clear, but they're sort of past our intuition boundary. They do things we don't expect them to do. So I want to show you real quick what the math looks like. Eh. And then I want to show you an example that I think maybe will help a little better. So here's, here's the big idea, okay? Let's say we've got a gyroscope turning. I've got it draw, drawn as a can there, and I'll show you why in a second. It's spinning about the z-axis. If I were to rotate it about the y-axis, you'd get a moment about the x-axis. Really? Well, here's what the math says. You get a moment about the x-axis as a result of, now this, this uh, capital omega there is motion about the y-axis, and that's the momentum, uh, angular momentum, about the z-axis. Let me get out of your way here. The angular momentum is the mass moment of inertia times the uh, speed in radians per second. So, uh, well, all right. That's a vector cross product, and what this is saying is you get a moment perpendicular to those two. That's what it says. Let's try this again. This is a router. Now, I don't mean the kind of router that makes computers talk to each other. I mean the kind of router you use when you want to make a table and carve stuff out of wood. Okay? And it spins really fast. There's a motor in here, and there's an armature that spins at uh, 27,000 RPM, which is, let's see, 2,827 ra uh, radians per second. So that's really spinning. That's much faster than the engine on a car. That's more like the speed of a large jet engine. Okay, it's got, this one actually has a little uh, bit in here. Probably shouldn't put that in there, but there it is. Okay, and it spins about this axis. See right here? That's the z-axis going up. Matches that picture right there. And I've got handles on it. Normally you use these handles to guide it as you, as you uh, make a cut. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to spin it and rotate it this way while it's spinning. Okay? If I do this, I should generate a moment about the x-axis. That's what the math says. And what you'll find out is while it's not spinning, while that is zero, not a problem. I can do this all I want. Okay? When I spin it up, and it's going to be loud when I do, when I spin it up, as I start trying to do this, it's going to want to go back and forth. All right? There's going to be a moment about the x-axis. So let's try this and see what happens. I probably can't talk while I do this. You won't hear me. Okay, so ready? Here we go. Okay, there it is. So what you saw was that when I was holding it loosely, just sort of almost like pivoting it, and went back and forth like this, well, here, now that I got it stopped, going back and forth like this, it kept wanting to go back and forth. That's that moment about the x-axis. Only when I really grabbed it and was able to counteract that force by the, uh, that moment by the force of my hands on these knobs was I able to get it to stop. So that's gyroscopic motion. All right? And remember, what's going on here is that was the motion of the armature of the uh, router. That was the motion I gave it by doing this. And this was the perpendicular moment that came out as a result. So there you go. That's the simplest way I know how to explain gyroscopic motion. I hope that helps, and I'll see you next time.